Hey there, my name is Julie Faithan Balzer, and I have been a professional working artist since 2012. So in the last decade, I have taught quite literally thousands of students in classes here in the US, internationally, online. So I've gotten a lot of questions and I've seen a lot of different approaches to taking classes. So today, I wanna to talk to you about what I think the best methods are for you getting the most out of any class you're taking, whether it's online or in person. So let's go. The first thing to note is that there are three stages, right? There's the prep for the class, the actual time in the class, and then the follow-up. And the thing is, I think that most people skip the prep and the follow-up, and they only think about the time that they spend in class. So let's talk about prep. I know, I know, you're rolling your eyes thinking, wait, I have to prepare to take a class? Well, I mean, there are some obvious things, right? If you're taking a class, there's often a supply list. So you might have to gather those supplies together. And that is actually a period of time where you can make some thoughtful decisions. It's not just sort of like, let's grab everything and shove it in a bag. Or if you're taking an online class, you know, not really thinking about your supplies. I think supplies are a good time to evaluate what you wanna work with. Is there a color palette that you're interested in exploring? Are there some tools that have been sitting around that you haven't really used? They're on the list. You know, maybe some brushes you use less than other brushes you use more. Or will you feel more comfortable using brushes you already know how to use? Again, there isn't a right or a wrong about this, but if you prepare for class by thinking a little bit more about the supplies you're bringing, then you'll probably actually get more out of class because you will have already thought about what you want to get out of class. And that actually brings me to my next point about prep. I believe that it is so important for you to create goals for yourself. One of the first questions that I always ask students when they come to class with me is I say, what are you hoping to get out of class? And listen, if you want to have a good time, that's fantastic. That's a goal. And that just in knowing that is important. But if you want to learn a specific technique, if you want to get out of your comfort zone, if those are things that want you want to have happen, you need to say them out loud. If the teacher doesn't ask, you need to at least say them to yourself so that you can go after those goals during class and so that you can be clear with yourself, you know, whether or not you're achieving what you want. And you know what? Ask for it. That's a really important part about learning is not being just a passive learner, but being an active learner. Okay, so you're going to get your supplies ready, you're going to set your goals. And then the other prep thing that I think is kind of important is, you know, a warm up. So just like if you were going to take a dance class, you probably would spend a few minutes, you know, stretching or doing whatever, getting yourself together. You probably shouldn't go into an art class completely cold. So that could mean that the morning of the class, you know, you warm up a little bit at home. It could mean if it's in-person class, you sit down, you arrange your supplies, you maybe do a quick sketch or a quick print, whatever it is that you're taking class in. If you're home, again, do yourself a favor and do a quick warm up. You'll just be more ready to create. Now, a lot of classes have the warm up built into it, and that's fantastic, but think about how much farther along you'll be if you do a little bit of the warm up yourself, okay? So, once you're done with prep, it's time for the class experience. So, here's the thing about class you need to participate. So, I know what you're saying because I feel this way too. What if I don't wanna participate? What if I just wanna sit in the back? So listen, there are ways to participate in class that aren't all about raising your hand and waving and talking the whole time. You can participate simply, does the teacher ask a question of the whole class and it's just like a thumbs up or a yes or a no? Being actively engaged in that way I think really helps you be excited about what you're learning and you know buy in to whatever it is that's going on in that classroom. Another way of really actively participating and listening is taking notes. Okay, hear me out. Here's the thing about notes. And I take notes in all the classes that I take. I'm that girl with a notebook at all the demos. I'm that girl in front of my Zoom camera with my face down because I'm writing the whole time. 
I think that notes are such an important way of participating in class. They help you clarify what it is you're hearing it and sort of filter it through yourself. They help you clarify whether there are little bits and pieces that are related to your goals that you're interested in. And they really help you remember after class because even 24 hours later, I can't remember what I just learned. So notes are so key. Now, how you take notes, if you want to take fancy Cornell notes, if you want to just jot down a bunch of stuff on the back of, you know, a pad of paper, whatever it is, I don't think it matters. Just take notes. Another way to participate is to ask questions. And online, you can do this in the chat. You can do it by raising your hand. If you're in a live online class in person, you can certainly do it by approaching the teacher or asking a question of another student. I think that questions are one of the best ways you can tell whether or not people are engaged. And it is also a way to make sure that you get exactly what you want out of class because you can ask the questions to get where you need to go. So yeah, questions. Okay, so you've had your class experience and it was fantastic. And you know, if it's a multi-part class and you're going back for more, you can actually use the follow-up experience after each class, which actually then sort of loops back in and becomes part of the prep for the next one. And if it's just a one-off class, then the follow-up is still important. We forget almost anything within that first 24 hours. Absolutely, we just forget it. I mean, that's actually the whole theory behind Cornell notes where you take your notes and then you sort of make some highlights and review what the big concepts are is that we're just not really good at remembering things. But for the follow up, here's what I suggest, which is whatever it is that you just learned the next day or later in the day, tell somebody about it because telling somebody about what you just learned and having to rethink about the concepts and remember what was important, you know, that kind of stuff really cements some of the learning for you. Look at your notes 24 hours later, you know, can you try to piece together any holes or gaps in either a process or an idea or something that you were trying to learn because it'll be easier now that it will be in three months. And then you might want to make some stars, some notes, some highlights, some things that stand out to you. So when you're looking to refer back, you can easily do it. Now, I do want to just say the following. If you are taking an online class that is pre-recorded videos and you have lifetime access, which all of my pre-recorded video classes are, a lot of people think, well, I'll just go back and review the video, but the video could be four minutes. It could be 20 minutes. Do you really want to search for the information that way? So yeah, I take notes when I'm watching a video because that way I can refer back so quickly, so easily, and it makes it really, really useful to me, the class, instead of being something that was fun, but is now out of my head. Okay, so let's review. You're gonna prep for your class. You're gonna participate in the class, whatever way that may be, whether it's asking questions, taking notes, you know, just engaging with what the material is. And then thirdly, you're gonna follow up after class. Now your follow up can be quick. It can be long term. You could go back to those notes three months later, six months later, however long it is. But I think the sort of immediate follow up is really important within the first 24 to 48 hours where you tell someone and you go over your notes and make any highlights. So. That is my best advice on how to get the most out of a class. If you're interested in taking a class with me, you can find them all at ballserdesigns.com. But I am so glad that I get the opportunity to talk to you about learning. If you want to watch my video on goal setting, I'll put the little link up here so that you can check that out. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you will subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up.